We're here today at Cambridge Regional College where we're going to talk to Luke about safe isolation. Knowing how to safely isolate a circuit is absolutely essential when working in the electrical industry, as well as to pass exams in accordance with awarding bodies. If you follow the step-by-step -step instructions given in the Student's Guide to the IET Wiring Regulations, you'll be well on your way to completing qualifications and becoming an electrician. Today we're with Luke who's training to become an electrician. Now Luke's going to run through the safe isolation procedure for us. Luke, one of the questions I'd like to ask is why is it fundamental to know how to carry out the safe isolation procedure when studying to become an electrician? Well it's fundamental to know the safe isolation procedure so that you can reduce any risk of electric shock while working. And what exactly do you mean by isolating the circuit? Well to isolate means to make sure that there is no power or electricity running to an accessory or circuit that you're going to be working on. And are you able to demonstrate that to us today? Yes, of course. This flowchart shows the complete safe isolation procedure. The safe isolation procedure is a process that when carried out correctly will reduce the risk of electric shock, burns or death to any person that is likely to come into contact with the electrical installation. So look, we're now in the, the testing bay that you're going to carry out the demonstration for us. What's the first step of the safe isolation procedure? The first step of safe isolation is to locate the correct isolation device. So how do you identify the, the correct circuit that needs to be isolated, the circuit breaker? In this situation we're going to look at replacing the shower and in a good installation, as you can see here, the, the board is labelled. So simply all we have to do is find the correct MCB that's labelled shower and switch it off. So we like to assume that the person that's installed this installation knows what they're doing and they've correctly labelled and you can identify the circuit from the label underneath the MCB. Yes, that's correct. You've gone through the first step with us. Now, what is the second step of the safe isolation procedure? Well, the second step is a very important step. You must always notify the appropriate person when you're going to turn off the power. So, who do you mean exactly by the, the appropriate person? Well, the appropriate person can be a number of people. For example, if you're working in a house, you would have to notify the person that owns the property that you're going to turn the power off. Or, if you're working in an office and you're going to turn off the electricity supply to computers, you must notify the people that are going to be affected by that. So really what you're saying is anybody that's going to be directly affected by the, the loss of power to a circuit, they need to be informed, they need to be aware that they're, they're going to lose power. Yes, that's correct. We've now identified that the, the appropriate people have been informed, so nobody's going to be concerned about the power getting switched off here. So what's the next step? What are we going to do now? Well, the next step is to actually isolate the supply. And how do you do that? So the first thing to do would be to switch off the circuit breaker. So every good electrician carries a safe isolation kit. Now, the first thing to apply is a lock to the circuit breaker. Once we've applied the lock, we apply a padlock and a sign to say that there is work being carried out on the circuit. You must always remember to keep the key on you at all times. OK, Luke, so now we've got the circuit breaker in the off position. You've got your locking device on there, you've got a label on there. So anybody that's coming across this, they can see quite clearly that work has been carried out on that circuit. So is it now safe to carry out some work on the installation? No, actually no electrician would just rely on switching off and locking off a supply. So what would an electrician do at this point? Well, they would actually test the supply to check for any voltage. And can you demonstrate how you're going to test that? Yes, of course. We have our voltage indicator and our proving unit. The first thing to do is check for any damage to the voltage indicator itself or any of the cable. We need to make sure that we know that this is working. To do this, we use our proving unit. When we put each of the probes into our proving unit, we can see that the voltage indicator will light up. We now know that that's working. OK, great stuff. The first step would be to remove the cover. When testing a circuit, we carry out three tests. Live to neutral, neutral to earth and live to earth. You must always reprove the test instrument after the circuit has been tested to identify that the instrument is still working and has not been damaged during the testing procedure. When carrying out the safe isolation procedure on a three-phase circuit, there are a combination of ten tests that need to be carried out. The combination is as follows. Earth to L1, Earth to L2, Earth to L3, followed by neutral to L1, neutral to L2, and neutral to L3. Now we have the line conductors. L1 to L2, L1 to L3, and L2 to L3. 
Finally, we must test between the earth and the neutral. Okay, look, so we've gone through the whole procedure. Now you've got your circuit breaker switched off, locking device, you've got your label there. You've taken the cover off your shower, you've tested all the terminals in the right combination, you've also proved your voltage indicator to make sure that it's still working. Are you now happy that this installation is safe to work on? Yes, now I've carried out all of the appropriate tests, I'd be satisfied to work on the installation. Excellent, that's a fantastic demonstration, thank you very much Luke. Paris. All persons working in the electrical industry are required to be fully competent in carrying out this procedure, and students can be asked to demonstrate their ability to do so during practical assignments. By following the information given in this guide, you will understand how to meet the current requirements of awarding organisations.